Hello everybody and welcome to the sketching tutorial how to model a coffee cup set with Shaper 3D. In this lecture I will show you how we can dynamically set up a sketch design that allows us to very quickly adjust few sketch elements to automatically modify the complete sketch design so we can explore form variation with minimal work and maintain design consistencies easily. Let's take a look at what this means. As you can see here, we have a small, a medium and a large cup. I'm going to hide those for the moment so we can take a look at the sketch. You see that the three sketches have repetitive elements. For example, it looks like the handle is pretty much the same. And then we always have the left side of the cup for the revolve command and there is a small element at the bottom also for keeping the, um, the rim kind of like it sits on always at the same position. Let's activate the middle sketch and there I have actually the dimension. I will set this dimension to 2 to make simply the cup a little bit thinner and when we zoom out now you can see the other two sketches have exactly the same um, material adjustment implemented. And the whole sketch works well. So it doesn't deform. For example, here, this one, I would like to adjust to seven millimeters. Let's zoom out. And there we can see even here, everything is adjusted. Beautiful. And this is basically what I mean about how we can set up a sketch, which I will show you now with the equal constraint. And then this way, make sure when we adjust, let's say the driving sketch, that all the other sketches which are being automatically adjusted, well, are automatically adjusted. And this way, we make sure that when I explore a sketch or a design, and there isn't something I will forget. That's the beauty behind this. Okay, so now let me show you how we can set up the sketch from scratch inside a new scene. First, we want to make sure millimeters are selected. All our snapping elements are turned on. We would like to create three objects so we can go to the front view and I will decide to work a little bit on the right side so I do not have the blue vertical Z line overlapping with the axis of a revolve line. So somewhere here, I think. We will start drawing a line straight up. This point I will lock, this line I will make vertical horizontal. You can also, if you prefer, keep auto constraint turned on. I always keep it turned off. This is just my preference. And this line, I would like to be 130 millimeters tall. This is a little bit taller than any cup, just on purpose, very good. And when I zoom out or zoom in already, you can see how the grid adjusts a little bit. So zoomed out a little bit, I will move this to this grid and maybe a little bit here, I will go bring it to there, then this actually lines up with one of the main grid lines, just not the Z line. Very good. Okay, so this is my revolve axis. Now to model a cup, I need a vertical line, a horizontal line, both should be horizontal vertical. I need an arc, this arc should be tangent. Very nice. Okay. I can bring this down a little bit. Now we need to design the material thickness. There's a material thickness, horizontal line down, vertical, a horizontal line, and another arc. And we set this all to tangent. Okay. So. This is kind of like our starting point. Now we have to adjust actually the sketch. So when I modify this value, the distance between these lines and actually also the arcs will 
be always the same. The arcs, we will actually center on each other by dragging one center point onto the other one. That already helps a lot by making sure when one line is adjusted, the other line moves with it. Let's go down to here, the distance. I would like to be one millimeter. There we are. And this one here is easy to select. We set this to four millimeters. And look at that. And you see how the horizontal element on here adjusts. And that is because we have actually the arcs locked onto each other. That's the trick. Very nice. The cup is a little bit big. Let's make this smaller. So this we will make 44. And then the height, we can select these two points, height adjustment, this we will make 66. Well, actually, I eyeballed this really well. That was a really lucky hit. Okay, very good. I will zoom out a little bit and then repeat the same process one more time. Or actually, I can do it this way. Double tap, copy, and then move this one over. Very good. Just what I have to do, however, is I need to adjust some of these dimensions again. A little trick. Double tap everything. Deselect the lines, uh, sorry, the arcs, and then I can give all the horizontal constraint. Very good. Here we will actually design the bigger mug. So this will be 50. And the height here, we will set to 80. Whoa, you see what happened? So that is because when we made a copy, these constraints got lost. And I just add in the tangent constraints. There we are. That helped actually making sure the sketch solver knows what to do. And there we are. Now this actually moved down a little bit. That is all correct because I did not specify this distance. There we are. Good. So now here I could give this nine millimeter. I have right now another dimension of four millimeter. That is obviously not what I want to do, at least not manually. So I select these two lines and then say equal. Here you see, isn't that amazing? Pretty cool, no? We can also adjust this radius, for example, here too. Let's make those the same. When I play with this, you see how the other one is just, how beautiful is this? This we specify 30 and this is way too big, 15. This is better. This is 33. Maybe we make this 20. Very good. Okay. I think you start noticing actually how powerful it is when we start using smart constraints and the equal constraint to kind of like specify a master sketch like on the left and then drive other sketches like the one on the right. I would like to have a small rim here. So I draw something like this, three millimeters, double tap, horizontal. And this line, I always want to be horizontal. How do I do this? Here's a little trick. I draw a line here. I can make this six horizontal lock this. So this will never move. Then this line to this line, I will make tangent. Now this line I can move left and right, but I cannot move this up and down. Let's copy this over. Actually, I just make a copy to here, so I can very easily streamline everything again. 
Here I will adjust these two being tangent. So that means when one actually moves up, you see the other one moves. There are so many ways how we can actually set up our sketches. That's pretty cool. Here we set them up as equal so that this will be just three millimeters. Very nice. How do we set up now the relationship to the arc? So when here, for example, this arc moves, I want this one to move. Well, this is very easy. We can actually simply specify a horizontal distance between these two uh, these two elements, the arc and the this square element. So if we set this now to 15 or 20. There you see how this all moves. Okay. So six, that means we can bring this one over. This number, for example, will always be the same. So here I just have to add this in. Very good. Because when we make this, let's say uh, 80, you see how this moves with it. Pretty cool. Yeah. Nice, very nice. We also would like to have a handle. So a line, a line, and an arc. Now we can specify everything. I will work first on one piece. Take a look at how this feels and looks. This will be 24, very nice. And this distance here we can set a clean radius so this can move up and down so we have to lock this in place five millimeters very good now this can move a little bit so to prevent this one to rotate, let's add a radius, or sorry, not a radius, an angle in that corner. And now the sketch is stabilized. Very good. Now we can go ahead and pretty much do the same to here. This will be horizontal because this is a bigger cup Make this also bigger, 85 and 110. And the nice thing is proportionally, they're really the same. When we set this 100, you see this goes up, but our piece does not adjust well because we forgot actually to put in this one vertical dimension here. So vertical, there we are. Very nice. And I will put in two arcs in there. Tangent. This is also a nice trick. I have a rather um, linear sketch that's simplistic. And then I put arcs in it instead of trimming everything because here I can measure the whole length specify the angle between these two that's quite nice and if I at one point for example don't like the arcs I can take them out and I maintain having my three lines 10 and we make this 15 very nice very good so let's do the same here, arc and arc, tangent, 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 and tangent. And then to streamline it, first arc, second arc, equal and equal. So when, uh, there was actually, I think, did I hear conflict? Let's see equal okay yep 
You have to be careful with what you select. Maybe I moved way too fast. This constraint, oh, I think why, yeah. So here, actually, I put this arc onto the midpoint. In there. That fixed it. So you to you and equal. Very good. So now when we say, let's try this one out with 20 or 15, you see how easy it is to do that. Very nice. Good. Now let's actually build two cups. I will select these two elements or actually all three fields and do a revolve. This is a tick too close. Okay, so when something like this happens, not a big deal. We have to take a look here. Where do we have something that is locked? This point is, for example, locked. Good. Then very careful, select everything. Maybe zoom out a little bit. And then there we are the grid snapping. We move this over. And then this point we lock again. Because we only moved it, we didn't make a copy. The constraints remained. Here again, we select all these fields. And then this line revolve. There we are. Pretty nice. No, it's awesome how easy that works. You can hide those. Then also here we can select two at the same time. We go seven millimeter up one direction. Then we take a look at the bottom at another seven. So there are 14. I would like to shell them and I select, as you can see, all those exterior, no, an exterior, no, not the top and bottom and the interior face. And then I go to shell, two millimeters. That looks too thin. Let's go with four millimeters. Okay, this is better. The nice thing about direct modeling is we can always later still adjust those values. Can you see? So we don't have to adjust the sketch. If actually we are direct modeling, we adjust the geometry, then we might at one point then want to go back into the sketch and also update it so it is nice and consistent. We cannot join yet the handles onto the body, as you can see. They do not fully intersect. So here, it's also why this view is actually useful. We extend this a little bit, both at the same time. You see, I just work on multiple objects. Really beautiful to save us time. We make sure they don't intersect or cut through. They do not. Awesome. Then double tap, double tap in union. And this is kind of like the process now after the sketch is done. I am creating all my, my objects. Select particular features, which are of interest. And then I can round them. They're round also pretty much really the same way. It's actually a tricky set here. Very nice. I have actually, if we go to cut section view, you can see how beautiful that surface looks like with the arc here and the arc there, the fillet. Very good. And one, two, three, and four. See, I just select random, random edges. And then we just round them. Very good. So I hope that basically this exercise quickly showed you how effective it is using 
smart constraining, particularly the equal. I use the equal constraint really a lot or doing basic dimension distances like here or with arcs, making sure that the center points are connected. That then this way we can set up a sketch system so that when we adjust one sketch, literally all other important elements will be adjusted at the same time.